Airtable's just released one of their most requested automation triggers, when email received, the ability to take an email that's captured and log it into Airtable. It's important to note that this feature is only available on business and enterprise scale. To get started, you're going to want to go to your automations tab here, and you'll see that there's an option for a trigger for when email received. That's going to be in our top list of triggers up here, as opposed to down below where we have various integrations. Now, what you need to know about this is it's not designed specifically for Gmail or for Outlook or a certain email provider. Instead, this is going to be more universal so that you can capture emails from anywhere. What this means is that it's going to give you an inbound email address. It's going to create a unique email address for each instance of this automation that you have. So if I created a new automation down below this one, and I want to have some custom logic with this other automation, then it's going to give me a new unique email address. So in order to use this, you're going to need to send emails to that particular email address. Now, if you're going to be setting up multiple of these automations, it's going to get a little bit messy because we have these really long email addresses. So here's where you can add a prefix to this. So if I wanted this to be all of my CRM activities, I could add in this CRM prefix to make it easier when we're trying to find that email address as we're sending out the email. Now, one thing I want to point out, if you're coming from other work management platforms, is that this email address is not specific to a single record or a single table that you have inside of Airtable. Some work management platforms create a unique email address so that every email that goes to that actually syncs to a specific task. In this case, we can build our own business logic around this, but it's going to be one email address per automation, not per record in Airtable or the table itself. To test the functionality of this out, I sent an email to the email address that was provided to me, and I put in a little bit of formatting here so we could see how that works. And then down below, I also added an attachment. Now, one question some of you might be wondering is, okay, because we have a unique email address, does that mean I have to manually insert that email address every single time? And the answer is that we have ways to work around this within the email provider itself. So I'm using Gmail in this case, I could come open my settings up at the top, look at all of the settings, and then you see we have the ability to add forwarding rules here. So that means we could have a designated inbox and forward everything to that email address. Probably you don't wanna do that both from a records limit standpoint and from a privacy standpoint, but you could create your own filter. So you could say, hey, only if emails come from this person or this individual, or if they have something specific in the subject. So you'd be able to add your own syntax if you wanted to track certain emails and then send that to that forwarding address. Now, I just wanna give you a heads up that the test trigger process was a little bit finicky for me. I had to press test trigger, send the email, press test trigger again, and then it ran. You'll be able to tell that it runs because you'll see that the step is successful and it should capture the information from that email that you sent. We can take a look at the different fields that are supported in our email. So this email ID is going to be the unique message ID of that email. And if you're interested in seeing what the body looks like, we can expand this. And so those bulleted items show up here. We were able to strip any of that extra HTML, which we do have the HTML version here, but we're not going to actually be able to render that inside of Airtable. So most of the time, you're going to be looking at the body of the email of what's actually the readable version of this. We do have access to the attachments as well. So you'll be able to take those images or other attachments and be able to add them into the body of your record itself. So now what kind of actions do we typically take from this trigger in our automations? The simplest one is going to simply create some sort of activity or email record. In a lot of Airtable projects that we do at Automation Helpers, we typically create an activities table that allows us to write different kinds of activities, be it emails or be it meetings and transcriptions from those meetings into one unified place. And so at a very base level, you could simply take that raw data and use it to create a record to store all of that information from the email. But one of the other common paths that we often take is to take information that comes in, in this case, it was a form submission, but same idea for email, to be able to say, hey, let's go ahead and take the text that we have from those email addresses. And instead of just writing it as a text field into Airtable, let's take those email addresses. Let's identify, do we already have a contact that exists for that? Do we already have an account if we're a B2B business? Do we have their account information? If we don't, should we go ahead and create the contacts, create the accounts, and associate all of that? And so there's really a lot that can be done behind the scenes with Airtable's automations if you want to go that extra step to get better structured data. And if you want to go the extra mile, remember that you have Airtable AI. 
This gives you the additional functionality if you want to summarize, extract insights, create tasks. All of this you can do with Airtable AI. If you have any questions about setting up your own Airtable automated business systems, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com, where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.